Hey everybody, I'm Noah from Midwestern Marks. That guy over there is our buddy Hugo, and I hope you got him in it because we're about to do another episode of One Minute Marks. With all the confusion resulting from the bourgeoisie's dominance over a lot of what's considered radical or left, or sometimes even communist in our society these days, using institutions like their academy, media, etc. to continually shape the narrative to lead us anywhere but to genuine Marxism, even some of the most basic Marxist terms have piles and piles of confusion on top of them. So today, let's dig one of those out and examine what the proletariat is. Now, if you pay any attention to social media, and if you don't, don't worry, you're not missing much at all. Uh, you've probably noticed there's been a huge hullabaloo over what constitutes the proletariat. And there's a lot of fancy sounding stuff about value creation and circuits of capital, working classes and all that. So it seems like a good time for this one. There are a few things we need to discuss when thinking about what a proletariat is. And with all of them, we need to keep in mind that we are not predefining a thing and then applying that thing to the real world. Instead, we are being concrete and observing what happens in the real world, and so everything we talk about is contextual. Or, to use a quote from J.B. Stalin that I've beaten half to death by this point, everything depends on the conditions, time, and place. Anyway, on to what the proletariat is. First and foremost, Marxism uses this term differently in different contexts. Today, we're going to talk about the big primary societal context of the word. And in this context, proletariat is not synonymous with working class. Not exactly, anyway. Lots of people do work, you know. We need to remember that a class only has a meaning in relation to another class when we view things dialectically. The proletariat is only the proletariat because it arises in contradiction to the bourgeoisie, who in turn arose in the last stage of society in contradiction to the feudal lords. The proletariat, in this sense, is created by capitalism forming and creating many people who have no connection to land or property of their own and must therefore sell their labor power to those who have land or property in order to survive and cannot accumulate, and Marx proves this one mathematically, by the way, in capital. Uh, this earlier stage of capitalism, or industrial capitalism, is governed by the buying and selling of commodities for profit. And so it creates a whole class of people who are then used to imbue those commodities with value when they use the labor power they were forced to sell. The dis uh, excuse me, the difference of which basically is what we call surplus value. And yes, we will have a one minute marks on that. Carlos and I actually recently had a very in-depth conversation on this. Uh, the Marxist view of value, productive and unproductive labor, and class. We'll put a link in the description if you're interested in learning more. But for now, let's stick to the creation of value and do a quick overview. This class of proletarians sells the commodity they own, labor power, to a capitalist who is buying and selling commodities, right? Labor power is part of what we call variable capital. And when it's used up, or when we work, the combined value of the materials and the product you make then has more value in it than before we did the work. Or we imbue this new commodity with added value. Without going too deep into it, the difference between the social average of this and what we make in wages is surplus value. This is really where capitalism begins to take shape. The commodity is then transported and sold by other workers who aren't part of creating that value, but instead part of the capitalist being able to realize it in its concrete form, money. From there, these classes form communities which give concrete characteristics to these classes and fundamentally shape the way that we think, view the world, and really everything within the superstructure of each community and also of society overall. And this is where a lot of the confusion can come in, I think. 
because we're now past the stage of industrial capitalism, right? Past the primary stage of imperialism and the first forms of finance capital, the cartels, syndicates, and trusts over top of all the industrial capital, and now into a higher stage of imperialism. And the communities created by these classes have shifted and changed over time. We had a big middle class arise in the U.S. And by the way, yes, Marx does use the term middle class sometimes to refer to those not directly within this big societal contradiction he saw taking shape between proletariat and bourgeoisie. The, the imperialist hegemon itself, our country, the USA, ha, now has been deindustrialized, right? The middle class is created by the post-World War II boom and the militant class struggle waged by the Communist Party USA, the trade unions, etc. Uh, of that period are really quickly being destroyed. And we seem to be seeing a re-proletarianization of the suburban communities that it allowed to develop, only with no nascent heavy industry to take them in, like an original proletarianization. But that's a whole nother bag of bananas. Let's just focus on proletariat for now. Remember, there are working class people who don't fulfill this role capitalism created, right? And there always have been. Doctors, teachers, professional classes like this have existed since before Marx was even born, right? They must sell their labor power, same as any worker, but aren't part of this essential contradiction created by capitalism. This can allow them to accumulate a bit of money and be a middle class in between, right? And that's okay. All of these social relations we enter into in order to do work and keep society going or reproducing society, if we want to jargon it up a little bit, these create our social consciousness. This is an essential part of what any class is. The proletariat and professionals may have a different social consciousness because of the last period, just as the peasants and proletariat did in the days of the October Revolution. But we all share a common interest in overthrowing the capitalist class. The proletariat is in a unique position to rally these other workers around it, form itself a communist party, or rebuild it in our context, and lead the way to a new, better historical epoch without all the parasites exploiting us. And that wraps it up. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time, and don't forget to click the link in the description for more.